we're in the book of First and Second Kings and kind of weaving into Chronicles. In your notes on Solomon, um, we have dealt with Solomon, his weaknesses and his strengths and his background. And then we begin to just go through the notes here of the advice that was given him as a young man by his father. And then his accession to the throne and how that was a rival. Uh, but the priest and the prophet and his mother Bathsheba kind of stood behind Bathsheba or behind Solomon and Solomon became the king. We learned about his appeal to God and what he asked for in his kingship, how he asked for wisdom and understanding, what most people would despise Solomon valued. And uh, we learned some lessons from there. We learned about his achievements, the building of the temple and the building of his palace and the building of uh, many cities. His writings of over 3,000 proverbs and over 1,000 songs. How would you like to write over 1,000 songs in your life? That, to me, in itself is amazing, uh, let alone everything else that he did. The rebuilding of the wall of the city, the expansion of Israel, the building of Israel's army, the success of his trade. But how all of that, towards the end of Solomon's kingdom, really turned into forced labor. And when Solomon ended as king, he wasn't really... Uh, well liked by the people because of all the labor that uh, he brought upon the people. His approach, he was not a war, uh, he wasn't a warrior like David, more of an administrator, coordinator, organizer, but certainly God used those uh, gifts in his life uh, to develop much. We learned about his allies, Hiram, and also Pharaoh of Egypt, where he got his horses and married Pharaoh's daughter. And that brings us to his adversaries in your notes, his adversaries. We're in 1 Kings chapter number 11. 